Hey, what's up, Jojo in the morning family? Hope everybody is having a really good day. I just noticed I did not fix my hair. It's a, what the, what the old timers used to do? Let's go. <laughs> I don't care. All right, today on Jojo in the morning, I want to talk to you about discernment. Discernment. Discernment is your friend. Discernment can keep you out of trouble. Discernment can get you in the right business deal. Discernment is something that we must have. A lot of times people talk about wisdom. Wisdom and discernment are two different things. Favor and discernment are two different things. Um, a lot of old timers, people say, man, they just know. They just they just know things. That's just discernment, okay? So what I want to talk to you about today is discernment through distractions. I told somebody one time, I said, you know the biggest problem you have? They said, what? I, I said, you're, you're too nice to people. They said, well, aren't we supposed to be kind and nice? I'm like, yeah, we're supposed to be nice and kind, but you're gullible. You believe people when they're lying to you because you don't have discernment. Big difference. I know people who are so hurt and wounded because they always believe the best in everybody. Now remember, God will bring people into your life and so will the devil. That's why we have discernment. I used to always say this to single people. Don't be with the wrong one when the right one comes along. You know, I, I was set apart and I remember the Lord said, the next person that you ever go on a date with will be your wife. You know what? I waited for two and a half years. Didn't even, didn't even focus on going out with anybody because I knew God would let me know. Two and a half years later, I'm literally at a prayer meeting. The door walks in. It's like a movie scene. And all of a sudden, Autumn walks in. The second I saw her, I knew she was my wife. Now, I hear the Lord really clearly. It, take, it took her a few weeks to really hear the Lord, okay? <laughs> but I knew I had discernment. I'm talking, waited two and a half years, and then second I saw her, I knew she was my wife, okay? In life, you got to have discernment. And the funny thing was, when I was younger and single, people would say, hey, I want you to meet this young lady. Hey, I want you to meet, every time a single girl would come to the church I was working at, hey, I want you to, and before I'd even say hi to them, Holy Spirit would say, no, 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 no. Business deals are like that. People, you know, offer me, hey, you what about this business deal? No, business deal, no. Business deal, yes. Like you just know discernment is so key, but distractions will try to get your discernment off, okay? 2 Timothy 2.15, always be eager to present yourself before God as a perfect and mature minister without shame as one who correctly explains the word of truth, okay? Always be eager to present yourself before God as a as a perfect and mature minister. Now, if you're gonna be perfect and mature, and it says without shame, please listen to this. Perfect, mature minister without shame. If you do not operate in discernment, you will have shame. Why? Because you made wrong choices. I remember one day, um, my wife and I, we were, were, were meeting with a, a younger lady. She wasn't really younger, but, you know. And I call some people younger. It makes them feel good when they're older. And we're just talking to her. She was new to our ministry. And, and I just, you know, like, hey, you know, you know, we see that you're, you're single. And she said, yeah, I just haven't had the best judgment in men. And I said, oh, okay. 
And she, she said, well, actually, I've had no discernment in my husband's, husband's, my wife said husband's, okay, well, how many times have you been married? She goes, well, four. Okay. And this lady said, I knew why I shouldn't marry each one of them, but I went ahead and married them. I've just never made good decisions in discernment. I never made good decision in jobs, even though I knew that this they weren't the right job. And I said, excuse me, you just said you knew why you shouldn't marry those four guys. You knew why you shouldn't take all the jobs you took. You have discernment, you just don't listen to it, okay? Let's go back. As a perfect, mature minister without shame, she had shame because how many times she didn't listen to discernment. When you listen to discernment, you don't carry the shame. And then you're able to stand up there and correctly uh, explain the word of truth. I remember when I was in my 20s, we were, I was preaching at a, a statewide youth conference and they had a panel of preachers up there. And I remember when, when I met my wife, the Holy Spirit said, don't touch her until you get married. And I said, okay. And then the Lord was showing me that one day y'all will have kids and you'll always have that testimony that you did not physically touch your wife before y'all got married. I said, okay. Well, we were at that conference and there were two of the speakers. They were just almost borderline beating the kids down when they preached. Real harsh. And so one young man asked the first guy, can I ask you a question? He said, sure. He said, did you and your wife have relations before you were married? He said, yeah, but you know, we don't need to talk about that. He said, well, you preached against it, but you did it. They went to the next preacher. They said, did you and your wife have relations? He said, yeah, you know, we did, but you know, we something. And they just, you know, and the young man said, okay, I'm glad you repented, but you did. Mr. Dawson, did you and your wife? And I said, no. I said, I was praying and I had discernment from the Lord. And the Lord said, you know, before you even go into the relationship, don't touch your wife physically because I want you to have this example. It's a sin, first of all, but you will have this example for the rest of your life. And so a lot of times in life, people get distraction, distracted by distractions and they move away from their discernment. Like the, the first thing I was telling you about, I knew the four guys were wrong. I knew all my jobs were wrong. She had discernment, but she went with something that was a distraction and it wasn't the Lord, okay? 1 Corinthians 7.35. This I say for your own benefit, not to put a restraint upon you, but to promote what is appropriate and to secure undistracted devotion to the Lord. When you have undistracted devotion to the Lord, everything works out. It's like when the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to not date until I show you your wife. You know what? I was like, okay, Lord, you know, whatever you want, I've, I've surrendered my life to you. Well, what you think about this scripture, uh, the writer is saying, you know, I'm not telling you this for, you know, my benefit, your benefit. Just, I mean, I'm just telling you that you can be devoted to the Lord until, and uh, it's good because there's been times in my life the Lord would tell me not to do a certain activity or an event or not. There's been times, Lord say, don't travel for a few months in ministry. I need your attention for a while, just like the scripture says. So I'd be like, okay, God, I'm, I mean, people are calling, ministry's good, things are going, powerful meetings. The Lord said, I need you to pull back for a moment. And, and it was for my devotion to him. A lot of people, a lot of people don't get that scripture. A lot of people don't want to understand that scripture, but it's for your the benefit of the Lord and your life. Okay. Uh, Colossians 3 and 2. Feast on all of the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities 
and not with the distractions of this natural realm. If you ever feel yourself getting distracted by things in the natural realm, do what 1 Corinthians 7.35 says, you know, pull away and have that, un, you know, undistracted devotion to the Lord for a season and see what he wants to do in your life. See, see, see what he does and you will see your life start to change. You will see things start to work out by the spirit of the Lord. So understand this, when you feel distractions coming in, understand that your discernment may be a little shaky. So always put that into consideration so you can move forward, okay? Love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow.